Hi everyone, welcome back to another video from Wesner's Tech News and Reviews. Today we've got the new band HR63 with us. So this is the new band brand. It's actually being sold and marketed in UK and is being sold through Argos, quite a big retailer. So they've had already a number of trackers and smartwatches, well, their attempts at these in the last two, three years. This particular watch or smart tracker is only 25 pounds. So this is the super budget category. The brand is saying that this watch can do so much things like it's got a full color touchscreen display. It's a sports and activity tracker, heart rate monitor. It's got connected GPS. It can measure your blood pressure, apparently and as well as blood oxygen so your spo2 so there is a lot of things on the box of this watch but can the watch actually do it well in this review that's what we're going to be doing i'm going to be doing an unboxing then we'll go through the watch through the functionalities but actually i have done an accuracy test a heart rate accuracy test for this watch already also i've taken out to the gym and put it up in a skipping test so basically there is a sport mode called skipping so i would expect that it would count the number of skips i'm doing well i've done that as well and the results are a bit iffy but we will be discussing those results in a separate video i'll leave a link to it just above me right now as well as at the end of this particular video anyways let's talk about the new band hr 63 and is this smart tracker worth the 25 to 30 pounds, it's actually charged. If you are new to Wesno's tech news and reviews, we talk about the latest tech news. We do brutally honest reviews and share hacks and tricks along the way. So let's take a look at the actual box. Well, it's a cardboard box. It's a uh, fairly large. Well, I'll tell you what, it's larger than the usual boxes you get the Fitbits in. It doesn't feel too premium, but it shouldn't, not for the price it's going at. Open up the box. Once you get it open, you lay it out, there's another box inside, a wide cardboard box. You've got the instruction manual. Tell you what though, the instruction manual does look rather premium. It's sort of glossy, it's very thick, it looks like it's got so much functionality. Telling you what though, you can go through this guide and it looks beautiful. But actually watch it. But hey. If you're gonna watch this video, you don't need this thing if you wanna operate your smart tracker. Because really, I think this thing makes it look much more complex than the watch really is. It's a really simple device. And being simple, that's not that good either because I think it's too simple. But hey, we'll get onto that slightly later. So in the box, you also get the charger. So that's a clip-on charger. It clips onto the back of the smartwatch. Um, so there we go. That's pretty much the unboxing. That's what you get with it. It's a really simple device, nothing overly complex. Uh, within two and a half hours, you'll charge the watch from zero to full. Now let's look at the design of the actual watch. So it is a rectangular shape. You will see the button on the top right of the case. And that does take us back to the Apple look. But of course, this is no Apple watch. I don't think it's... <laughs> I don't think it resembles the Apple Watch in any sense whatsoever, but there is this turnable button. The funny thing is about the turnable button is what you turn it, it doesn't really do anything. You can't go through menus by turning the rotatable crown. It just doesn't do anything. It's there, I don't know, it's just unscrewed. I don't know. There's no much point of it rotating, so it should be fixed. It should be just a button. Now, when you do click the button, it actually switches the screen on and off. There's no more functionality to this button. Now, being a touch activated display, that means you can swipe down to get to your shortcuts. You can swipe up from the home screen, you get to your messages, and then you can sort of slide sideways, either left or right, to go through the rotatable sort of menu where you have your system menu, you can find your phone, your stopwatch, you get your messages here, you get your weather widget, you get your training, sport modes, but we'll be talking about sport modes in just a minute. Then, of course, you've got your blood pressure and your SpO2. Now, before we go any further, we have to stop right here. Now, there's a reason that watches that can measure your blood pressure are actually FDA approved, right? Because this is a medical metric, right? This metric 
can save your life. It can forewarn of really major health issues. And these FDA approved metrics are usually on the Samsungs of this world. They are on the Apple watches. And these watches with these functionalities do cost 300 pounds or 300 bucks plus, and that's at least because this tech is highly complex. Right, so what this watch offers, I'm not even gonna test it because there is no way that it can do it because this watch can't handle simple things like accurate heart rate monitoring. It can't handle sport modes such as skipping. So what are the chances that it will calculate your blood pressure? correctly and god forbid that anybody who buys this watch actually relies on the values that this watch will give you because this is not a medical device no it's not now anyways then of course you get the summary screen and you get back to home now let's talk about the design just a bit more so we can see that the lugs are plastic now i do have an issue with that i understand it's a budget tracker but these lugs they are very uh, i don't know they're kind of thin I, I don't know how long it's going to last you and how much tear wear and tear these lugs will take let's talk about the strap the strap is actually i love it it's so soft this is tpe rubber but it feels like silicon it's just so velvety the quality of the strap did amaze me i think this is really good quality for this price another good thing is that you do get a metal clasp although it's rather fiddly it's very thin metal but it does have the logo the new band logo on the top here and that's a bit of a premium touch and it's nice it's 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 a nice touch the watch case is plastic everything is plastic even the top of this i don't know if it's glass it does feel like glass but it's not the nice glass. So you can actually, when you're rubbing the front of this watch, it doesn't feel as smooth. It's not the experience you're getting. It's just sort of, well, it's glass on top. That's it. Now let's talk about the display. So the display is a square panel sitting right bang in the middle of the surface of the display. Now it's not brim to brim. The bottom lip is rather thick. The top lip is also quite thick on the sides you do get quite thick bezels as well. But it is a sufficient amount of screen. So I think the screen size here, does it actually tell you what the screen size is? No, I can't see what it is, but my guess would be this is somewhere around one and a half inches in diagonal. So it's not a bad, bad screen. Now, if we're talking about brightness, there's no auto brightness because there's no ambient light sensor. What there is though, are four brightness levels. If you want to extend or prolong the time that you can see the screen or while the screen is lit up, you can actually uh, adjust it from five to 15 seconds via the Glory Fit app. So the Glory Fit app is the app that you use with this device. In my personal opinion, this app is mostly useless because it doesn't track nor store any of your exercises other than the ones where connected GPS is used, such as walking, running, cycling. So let's say you want to go out for a run and you actually start the exercise via the app, but then you don't need the watch because it won't connect the results between the watch and the app. So you can just use the app on its own. So it's a bit nonsensical in my opinion, but nonetheless. So let's talk about the features and functions. There are plenty of sport modes here. I doubt that they were very well thought through. Let me tell you why. So let's go to sport modes as an example. So as I said, I've performed a test, I was skipping. So skipping is usually like a very simple sport mode. So in here there is skipping, which is great. So let's get in there. But there are plenty of sport modes. There's about 20 sport modes in here. You could cricket, rugby, volleyball, baseball, boating, gymnastics, indoor running. You've got sit-ups but if you got sit-ups why no leg curls as an example why no squats i don't know it's just it seems like at least sporadic names but usually with um the more premium branded 
sport trackers when you go into a sport mode you can actually have settings you have options with the sport mode they can be goal based by goal based it means that you can set yourself a goal say do an exercise for an hour or 30 minutes and the watch will send you a haptic alert via vibration or a tone to basically stop you've reached your goal or maybe um, calorie burnt goals such as when I burn 300 calories let me know that I'm done of course if you're doing something like walking running or cycling you can have a distance alert now this watch doesn't allow for any settings whatsoever right so it does say that this is splash proof what does splash proof mean is it ip65 can you take it to the pool with you probably not it doesn't have a swimming mode so it's not going to have any pool metrics like how many lengths you've done there's no auto recognition of your stroke but i would actually be very wary of even taking this to the shower with you so i am just not quite sure what this watch can do and how actually durable it is anyway when you go into the sport mode you don't have any optionality you can't set any goals uh, you can't set auto pause alerts you can't do much at all in fact when you do start an activity I couldn't even stop my activity because the screen is rather low responsive so you just have to keep on tapping the screen for something to actually recognize that you're tapping and not just swiping. When I finished with my skipping workout, I faced an issue. The watch or this smart tracker, it didn't save the workout and you've got no way to go to your recorded workouts of what you've actually done and have a look at how you performed. So that's pretty much shocking and you can't do that on the app either. So it seems to me like this is a very budget tracker. It sort of says I can do all of this, this and this, but in essence, I'm not doing any of these things rather well. So 25 quid or $30. What can you get instead of it? What are your alternatives? Well, there are a few. Take for example, the Mi Band 6. This is a 1.6 inch AMOLED display. It's a great tracker from Xiaomi. There's a number of really cool features on it. You've got Pi, you've got an excellent sleep tracker. Yes, it does have Connect GPS, but you can take it to the pool. It will auto recognize your strokes. It will measure your, um, it will measure your swarf. You get very accurate heart rate monitoring. You've got a great SpO2 monitor there. But let's say you don't like the traditional tracker although it has very thin bezels and it stretches across the full screen, you might want to take a look at the Huawei Band 6, another 1.43 inch AMOLED display. It's a huge display, which is not just LCD as you get here, but it's actually a bezel to bezel, brim to brim AMOLED. It's super bright. And again, you've got very accurate heart rate monitoring. You've got continuous SpO2, and all that thing costs us about 35 quid. Then of course, you've got Honor Band 6, which is pretty much just like the Huawei Band 6, looks almost the same, but you don't get continuous SpO2. But you get 10 sport modes. On the Huawei, by the way, you get 96. All of them are goal-based. On the Huawei and Honor Tracker, as an example, you get very accurate sleep tracking because it's actually been developed. This technology, the sleep technology used by Huawei and Honor, the technology was developed in conjunction with the Harvard Medical School. So you do get these really cool features on big brands which don't cost much more. So I would have a question. Why are you looking at something like this when for about the same price? Well, actually the Mi Band 6, I think it costs just 22 quid, so cheaper than this. Why would you get this over something that comes from a reputable brand that has been heavily tested and accuracy has been attested across a number of things like its heart rate accuracy, its SpO2 accuracy, its um, step accuracy, calorie calculations and so forth. But if you did decide to go for this particular tracker, make sure to watch the skipping and heart rate test that I am performing in the video that I left a link to just above me right now. Because maybe you're getting something that you didn't quite bargain for. Anyways, thank you for watching this review of the new band HR63. If you did enjoy it, please drop me a like. 
If you want to see similar kind of videos going forward, then please make sure to hit the red subscribe button below the video. And I'll see you in the next one.